was a huge scandal on the Eurovision Song Contest and I'm not sure if you even noticed. Obviously this video is not about politics so let's don't talk about that. We want to talk about good sound. And it turns out that Eurovision messed up the grand final performance from the winner. So if we have a listen to the semi-final compared to the grand final there is a technical flaw and let's check if you can listen what's happening and afterwards I will tell you what's happening and for me this is such a such a bummer like I was really disappointed I can't even listen to the original recording anymore because something is clearly messed up so let's have a listen to the performance of the grand final from JJ obviously at the beginning we have a little bit of uh, of uh, the jingle and a little bit of applause and I show you the original first Sounds okay, right? But now let's compare it to the semi-final. Yeah, so long story short, the semi-final is technically correct. It sounds good to me, the whole performance, by the way. While the grand final is somehow mono. The file is mono and I'm not sure if anybody noticed like 8 million views and I, I feel like I'm the only comment uh, who tried to point it out so give this a thumbs up <laughs> in case you see that um, let's have maybe another listen to, to the song uh, you can clearly also hear that at the beginning there's the piano uh, which is by the way Una Corda I'm pretty sure that's the uh, plugin that was used here it has um, very interesting sound by the native instruments it's like a, a computer plugin uh, that emulates a piano and it has this felt so you can hear not only the sound of the piano like the hammer triggering um, the strings but also a lot of movement a lot of sounds that you wouldn't want that may but sounds that make the piano very um, organic I would say so those unwanted noise is what keeps the energy and like uh, the movement of the piano so let's have a listen um, to maybe to the original first <laughs> this time and you will hear that uh, the higher notes of the piano are more to the right and the lower notes are more on the left which is like a stu uh, uh, typical stereo setup Now in mono. I'm an ocean of love. I mean, it still sounds okay, but what I really like with the stereo, or like the original intended version, is that you have the vocals in the middle, which are mono, which is totally fine, but then you have the surrounding. And what I guess happened here is that uh, the whole video. I mean, they work uh, under a lot of pressure. I was there, I saw it. There are so many people involved. Um, but I guess what happened is that uh, in order to upload the video on YouTube, they had to implement uh, this intro and I guess probably also an outro. So they probably put it into, I guess, DaVinci Resolve or choose your editing software of choice. And if you are not careful, chances are you put the audio on a mono track and then export it and the exported video could have technically stereo sound so dual mono sound but as you can hear it it sounds it sounds uh, the comparison is terrible obvious maybe let's have another listen to um i think when the drums kick in this is where it's like super obvious this is how the final the grand final sounds like uh, maybe Great performance. I love the song, by the way. Super modern production. I'm really not a fan of opera, but this kind of got me. And like this hybrid percussion, you have the epic drums, the epic like horns and what's what's uh, and the strings, like what's happening in the background. And then they understood that in the end of a performance, you need to keep the momentum going. You still need to keep the, the, the people entertained. You only have three minutes. And I guess this is what Germany tried better this time. 
but um, it's always getting wrong to just place a song and then that's the performance but you want to have like firework in the end and this is what I did great with the like with the overall performance with the acting and with the um uh, with the techno break at the end. Here's a fun story that's not even related to the mono and, and stereo part, but I was there, as I mentioned, in Basel to the, uh, not to the grand final, but to the uh, last rehearsal, the final rehearsal. And this was so hilarious. Like there's, there was literally a person on stage uh, with a boom and they had like this invisible string and then somebody was literally this paper ship operator <laughs> to give you this effect so if you were wondering how this was um, how this was even made I found it really funny so how can we do it better next time I mean obviously I'm the guy for spatial audio and now I do modo and stereo comparison give me a break so let's just talk about things that people could better understand than what the hell I'm doing. So I prepared a little session and uh, on the top we have the grand final performance and on the bottom we have the semi-final. And uh, things you can do is use such tools like the vector scope. Uh, both both tracks, they go into this track and on this track, uh, this is just a plugin. You can use any plugin you want. And if I play back uh, the stereo version, this is how it's supposed to sound like and to look like. Have a look here. And so on. And you could see that uh, the whole track, maybe let me play it back in the meantime. Ah, we can do that. Uh, yeah, I'm practicing my YouTube skills. <laughs> Bear with me. I'm trying to, to get my setup going. Anyways, so what this thing does is compare the difference between the left channel and the right channel. So you can see there is some difference and that, that you have like sound scattering all across the vector scope from deep sounds to higher sounds while the, wire, the higher sounds usually have more of this stereo effect and it's somewhere between 0 and plus 1 which means uh, the correlation. Uh, 1 means there is, uh, let me check my English, there is 100% correlation should be the term, so the channels are the same. While if you have minus one, the channels are out of phase. And while mixing, you should really avoid going to minus one because it will sound weird and I can show you how this will sound like. But let's compare it to the grand final version. And this is how it looks like and how it sounds like. And you will see... It's basically just one line and it's a hundred percent correlation between the left channel and the right channel. You can really see that it looks the same. And um, if I move to the other version, there is slightly difference between those two channels. So this is what you can use, a plugin that will really show you, okay, now you're having mono or like dual, uh, dual mono or you have stereo. And if you're interested, this is how this whole thing would sound like if I crank up the stereo brightness, so like the stereo image is the right term, I guess. And you will see that this uh, from uh, this bar will move to minus one and it will sound a bit weird. Have a listen on headphones. <laughs> especially when we have a lot of stereo image. You can hear that there is um, a lot of stereo going on, uh, but it, the whole sound just falls apart. This is why it's a good um, time to check your mix for a stereo compatibility. What I could also do with this plugin is stereoize it. So um, I could try to make this mono thing stereo again, but you will have a listen and realize, okay, that's not how it works. I will press uh, here stereo rise. What it does is basically try to create some artificial differences between the left and right channels, which are not there. And you can hear there's like a, a little bit of a time difference. You have even two modes and I guess they uh, work a little bit differently. Yes, the, the decorrelation mode, uh, blah, 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 impulse to generate sound. Yeah. yeah, whatever this does, this is more like the black magic of <laughs> all those tools. You don't really know what is happening here. So that would be the option one. And the option two, to avoid something like this happening is 
wear headphones. This is the easiest way to hear a difference. I mean, for you, you now get used to the effect. Um, but I, I get it. If you listen to this performance... Whoops. Let me switch off the stereo rise. You would initially think, oh, this sounds good. It's like techno, there's so much happening. You're so focused on different things. But if you compare it to the stereo... This is how it's supposed to sound like. Um, so that would be option number two, where headphones is, is the easiest way. Um, I like literally last week, uh, I, I had this, uh, this similar issue where I was just previewing a sound on a laptop and turns out also the sound was mono, but you can't, you can't really tell from just small loudspeakers. You would have to have like a decent studio and listening environment so that you wouldn't uh, miss such fail and yeah uh, the next time I guess the option number three is to just ask me for help no I'm just kidding <laughs> the Eurovision is such a big uh, show there are so many people uh, that I, I respect from my heart it was such a great show I really enjoy being there but I also had a listen to um, the Eurovision Song Contest in 3D audio, which was interesting because, I mean, the production is in stereo. It's a decent stereo production. Uh, the vocals are most of the time mono. I mean, that's, that's, that's totally fair. This is, where the mo this is where the vocals sit. Um, but you do have some uh, stereo imaging for the... Um, for the audience and I was listening to a demo from I think it's Fraunhofer Institute at Tonmeister Tagung and they had uh, a spatial rig I can't remember what it was it, it could be a quad it could be ORTF 3D so basically you don't, you don't have um, the microphones pointing to the front like to the audience you also had them point to the back and up and down and this would give you like this feeling of being there and although the songs weren't produced in multi-channel audio as suppose Dolby Atmos for instance you would just play back the stereo file add the mono channel from the singer like the live vocals and then put in a little bit of this fancy microphone which points in all directions and suddenly you had a really interesting spatial experience you could maintain the clarity of the stereo but also a little bit of the audience and there were like some songs where the people clapped and it sounded so great you had literally people screaming behind you and singing with you and this was a great experience and i think this is where spatial audio potentially in the future could be used more because this is a use case where you try to get the people into the audience although i have to admit i was there and the eurovision song contest is a show for television and you could tell because i mean i was looking to the stage and you were far away and there's so much happening around that you don't even see on TV, but they have to do this in order to make the, the visuals work, like to, to capture the perfect camera, to capture the perfect uh, sound. Most of the time, the perfect sound, not here. But um, there are so many things they have to do on location, which kind of make the sound or like the experience for visitors on location a bit difficult because honestly the sound on location was pretty I wouldn't say terrible I have high expectations but I mean it, it was a big venue for like 10,000 people and those line arrays hanging at the ceiling you have a lot of uh, reverb added on top of that it was super loud like I was e wearing earplugs and then it kind of was too quiet although I have like very expensive <laughs> earplugs that <laughs> try to uh, give you um, a good experience and not like this muffled uh, thing but still it wasn't as nice as watching uh, on TV afterwards so you could argue the live experience is not the best uh, sound experience but I would say um, why try not both and uh, what I heard was really promising to give you the feeling at home that you are there you are immersed and I guess this is where the future of sound is so this was probably a longer video than expected I hope you enjoyed it I'm yeah just trying to mess around and see what works for me and what I enjoy doing and um, yeah I was wondering did you guys realize this thing 
without me <laughs> telling you and now could you really hear the difference or is this something where you would say who the hell even cares who am I to judge anyways so this would be very interesting for me to do like a little reality check because I talk so much about 3D audio and then we have this thing about mono and stereo and nobody's even talking about that so thanks for letting me know thanks for watching see you next time and make sure you subscribe cheers